Got a good long look at the offense Thursday at Ohio State football practice here at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. I'm Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com along with Doug Maurice and Stephen Means. On the offensive side of the ball, Stephen, I know that you came into today wanting to get a closer look at the receivers. This is the third time we've been allowed to watch the team, and this is by far the most we got to watch them, including 11-on-11 sessions and 7-on-7 and seven seven today. Yeah, for start, whenever they went team period or 11-on-11, 11 11, the starting receivers were Marvin Harrison at X, Julian Fleming at Z, and Jackson Smith at Jigbert at slot. Two of those things we can pretty much print in ink, and that's Jackson in the slot and Marvin at X at this point because that was always the case. But there were also some periods where Emeka Ibuka was the starting Z and Julian Fleming was in the second, te- second team with Jaden Ballard and Xavier Johnson in the slot because, one, Cam Babb, is, he tweaked something from what Ryan Day said today, so he wasn't going for a full go. I think he did one competitive thing the entire day and was in and out of drills all day, which is, I mean, you've got four ACL tears, so it's, they're probably going to play it slow play it with him as much as possible. But I do think it's just interesting to continue to see the dynamic between Emeka Ibuka and Julian Fleming, who are two very different skill sets. Emeka seems explosive, and he showed a lot of that last year. And even watching him run around, you can see the explosiveness that I don't necessarily feel like I saw from Julian Fleming, whether it was in moments last season or today. It just felt more, I'm consistently this, I'm consistently this. So it's almost a qu- this is the first time Brian Hartline's really run into this question that Larry Johnson has basically been dealing with for the last couple of years. Do you go with the older guy who kind of knows what he's doing, or do you go with the younger guy who might be a little bit more explosive and might be a little bit more talented? So that's going to be something that is going to be continuing to be interesting to watch, especially if they're going to play all four of these guys. Who ends up actually playing more snaps? Doug, you asked about it, Buka. Uh- to Ryan Day, and he said a lot of those same things, that you can you can start to see some of that show up. It's hard not to like him when you watch him. Just the way he moves, it, it feels different. But then as Steven and I were watching him, it's like then they're they're running through the individual drills, and Julian Fleming's always up first, and then Emeka Buka would be like third or fourth sometimes in that line. So it's like you're trying to figure out. But then he would, when he would go, your eyes just go to Emeka Buka. So if you just said, I don't know anything, I think you'd come out of this practice. If you watch the receivers the whole time, you'd say, who's that guy? He seems good. But if, it does still feel like he's kind of behind Julian on the depth chart. So, you know, continue that battle and continue to watch it. One place where we know the starting lineup is solid is the offensive line, but we came into this fall camp really concentrating on what we're going to find out below that. Who was going to step up and be the sixth, seventh, eighth best offensive lineman? I asked Ryan Day today if they had to have a second left tackle, who would it be? And he said either Zen Mahalski or Josh Fryer. And that he, they hope that both of those guys are the answer at the two tackle spots. They, that was the weakest position maybe on the whole team as far as depth coming into this camp, right? That Or like the most uncertain, maybe the most uncertain position on the whole team was like the, the tackle depth, the offensive tackle depth, and who was really going to prove themselves there. And both of those guys are stepping up. And he also had good things to say about um, Enoch Vamahi and the camp he's had and what he is going to be. So we're not even halfway through camp, and it seems like they are becoming more convinced that they have maybe a six, seven, eight on the offensive line. And now it's just a matter of still wanting to keep that first five healthy. You, Doug, were also checking out the tight ends today. Yeah, we did our Driving the Bus podcast on Buckeye Talk the other day, and a lot of people were excited about G. Scott. And there's a lot of reason to be excited about this guy. It's a transition from receiver to tight end. It's very intriguing. They did a, a drill where they ran some bubble screens to some slot guys, and then they ran one to Evan Pryor out of the backfield, and then they ran one to G. Scott. And it's like, okay, i got to get the ball to this guy. But I, I asked Ryan Day about it. It just still maybe feels like more like transitional, transformational for him this year because Cade Stover, who's the number one tight end, was catching stuff today. And then Ryan Day was talking about he's worked hard on that, worked on his hands, worked on his route running. He got open and caught a wheel route, and Stephen Means said, tight end, wheel route. Like it's like you're watching. I think it's, it's more Cade Stover, if he comes along as a receiver, that really, really sort of sets, not shuts the door but settles that position. I, I still just think it might be still a season early on G. Scott as he continues to build his body to be a, a tight end. It's fun, but watching Cade Stover catch the ball a kind of a lot today was the thing that was like, okay, I, that's their tight end. And no one has ever questioned that G. Scott can catch the ball. It's all been a question of how much of the other things does he do that they desperately need their tight ends to do, the things that are more important to them than the tight end catching the ball. And I'm still really super intrigued by him long term. I don't know, like you're saying, Doug, 
how much of a 2022 impact is there? I'll just say from watching things, K was clearly first at this point. I think we can all agree he's a starting tight end. Joe Royer was always second, followed by Mitch Rossi, and then followed by G. Scott whenever they were doing stuff. Which should just tell you the thing. I mean, behind Mitch Rossi right now. Now, granted, I did see a part when they were doing run game stuff where Joe Royer was the inline tight end and uh, G. Scott was the, the Y tight end in that situation. So that shows you where the physical transformation is taking Joe Royer. But I think you're right, Doug. It's still – physical transformation time for G. Scott. Maybe let's have this conversation a year from now. We're going to talk through all of this a whole lot more on Buckeye Talk. Get that wherever you can find podcasts and get the text. If you haven't already, 614-350-3315. Threw a whole bunch of information at you as soon as we walked off the field today. We'll keep doing that all through preseason camp and on into the season from Buckeye Talk.